Hey everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to my channel. My name is Maiko, welcome to my hobby channel, Floating in Dreams, where I like to talk about all things fashion and makeup. And today I'm going to be sharing my very first true, true video all about eyeshadow palettes as part of my eyeshadow palette extravaganza here on my channel, as well as my blog, for the entire month of August. That's right, in August I'm going to be doing pretty much only eyeshadow palette uh, related content content and I'm going to be sharing an extra video with you every single week on Saturdays. So I hope you're all strapped in and ready to go because today I'm going to be sharing my top 10 summer eyeshadow palettes with you. Let's go. So before we get to these eyeshadow palettes, I need to address the hair. Yes, I got a haircut yesterday. Uh, so it's now a fair bit shorter because it was getting so long. It was driving me absolutely crazy. It still looked fine, actually. There was nothing wrong with the cut or anything like that. It's just that it was, it was becoming so long that I could barely like manage it very well. So I got a haircut. They gave me a lovely blow dry. So please don't think that this is what my hair looks like normally. It's not. I can't do this myself, like I just don't. It's going to usually just look really messy and wavy if I wear it down. Um, but yeah, that's enough about the hair. Let's get to these eyeshadow palettes because I've got 10 for you here that I think are quintessential summer palettes to me. And if you are a loyal viewer of this channel, I think you're going to have a bit of a heart attack because it's going to look like I'm breaking character, okay? For those of you who've been watching me for a long time, they will know that I love a good, cool-toned eyeshadow palette. That's my vibe, that's my jam. If it's cool tones, I'm game. But there's just something about the summertime where I'm like, I, I love me a good warm tone. So if I'm gonna go for warm tones, it's probably going to be the summertime. Warm tone and, and brights. That, that's what I like to reach for. So it's not going to be like my usual thing, that's for sure. Um, so yeah, that's why these 10 palettes are perhaps a little differently from what you had expected. These are going to be in no particular order. It's already my top 10 favorite summer palettes. I don't really feel they need a ranking because I think they are too different to really be able to say like, oh, then this is my ultimate favorite. Because I feel to me they all do something slightly differently. So let's just get started and talk about these 10 palettes that I have for you. So I do have a 50-50 split here for you of palettes that are perhaps a little bit more neutral and then some palettes that I would deem to be more colorful. Uh, so I'm going to start you with the more neutral ones first. And I also like to always rec recommend like a blend of things more affordable, things that are perhaps a little bit more expensive to buy as well. And I think it doesn't get any more affordable than Catrice. Now these palettes are not released globally, so I'm not sure how easy it is to get. Please contact Catrice if you wanna know uh, whether this is available in your country. They are very active on Instagram, so just check out the brand there and ask there because people are always asking me whether they can buy a Catrice and how they can get a hold of the brand. But to be quite fair, I'm not a brand representative, so I'm not the person to ask. So on uh, Instagram, that's usually what I do as well. Like I go onto Instagram and ask them directly and they are usually pretty quick to respond. But yeah, these little five in a box palettes that they started doing about a year ago are lovely. And I've already been able to see what they're gonna be doing for the fall winter season. And they're coming out with two neutrals. Again, a more warm toned one and a more cool toned one. But this is one of the original lineup. This is the warm spice look. 030 and it doesn't just get any more like perfect warm tone neutral if you ask me you get a really stunning like coppery bronze kind of shimmer in here this other shimmer that you get is this really lovely like very warm tone champagne you get two lovely very good decent crease shades one to blend things out one to deepen things up and you get a really nice rich dark chocolatey brown that really has that reddish undertone so it goes really well with the other shades and i think this is a really lovely very well curated five pan that gives you everything you need for a very neutral yet very nice and spicy warm toned look and these retail for 3.99 over here so what else do you want so we're kicking it off with a banger now in a similar vein, I'm not even sure anymore if you can still buy this because Urban Decay has been discontinuing quite a few of their naked palettes in the past couple of months. So I'm not sure if you can still get the Naked Heat. Not entirely sure. 
Um, but yeah, the Naked Heat is definitely one that in the summertime I want to reach for. Like these reddish tones, oh, give them to me. Like I don't love warm tones because I have a cool to neutral undertone and for most of the year it just doesn't look right. However, in the summer and especially like early fall if we have a bit of an Indian summer going on, I'm usually just a little bit more tan. I mean, I don't really tan to be quite fair. I tend to just turn lobster red if I go out in the sun and then I go back to being pale. So uh, I don't really tan at all, which is why I just avoid sunlight altogether. I'm a bit of a vampire, you could say. But yeah, I do like to amp up that spiciness and then the naked heat is just really lovely. I really live for like these reddish tones over here in the middle of the palette. Those are my favorite shades. You get some gorgeous shimmers in here, some really good mattes, and the Urban Decay Naked Heat is one that I wish they still did because I think it's a really good warm tone palette. It was just, in terms of warm tone palettes, it was probably one that was released a little late to the game, which I feel is why this just didn't get as much hype as it could have been given. If this would have been released like a year or two before it came out, it would have been getting a lot more hype, I'm sure. Sadly, another discontinued one, however, there is a color story on the market that allows you to do something very similarly, but it is much more expensive. And I'm talking about the ColourPop Dream Street palette. Now this was a collab with Kathleen Lights that ColourPop no longer does. However, ColourPop has now, since this palette has been discontinued, come out with a large 30 pen palette that features a lot of similar shades. So you can look into ColourPop. However, if ColourPop, ColourPop is difficult for you to buy because you don't live in the US and it just becomes a bit pricey with all the shipping and handling fees you're gonna have to pay, then the Urban Decay Naked Wild West that was released this May, March, May, March? March, um, also is a great alternative to this because you also get warm tones and teals in both of those palettes as well. So this is definitely not a unique color story. Uh, there are other palettes out there on the market that do something very similarly. Um, but yeah, I really, really hold my ColourPop Dream Street close to my heart. It's one of the very few ColourPop palettes that I have left intact because I feel everything works. Like even though these two shimmers um, and also like, like some of these shades are just a little samey right here at the top, but I still appreciate every single shade it has in here. And of course, you know how I feel about teals. So that's why this palette is lovely, but especially this like corally shade is what really brings this palette into the summer season for me. However, it is also one that I quite like a lot for the fall time, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, but then I tend to focus more so on the teals and I like to combine the teals with the warm tones more so in the summertime. So I would opt for a different look if I'm wearing it right now. A palette you can still get and a color scheme that I really like to go for in the summertime is berries, which are also warm tones. And I feel that the Venus XL from Lime Crime is um, the modern renaissance on steroids. My favorite part about ABH's modern renaissance are the berries and the reds. What do you get in this palette? I do apologize for any glare because this is very reflective. Uh, you get a lot of berry shades, just really varying shades of berry and I like to reach for this every 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 year in the uh, summer season I like to go back to this it's got some really interesting like pops of something bright which are verging on neon that can really amp this up for the summertime if you want to go for something brighter but you also get loads of like really stunning like murky shades I think that in the long term, if I ever decide to declutter a modern renaissance, I would keep this around because I feel I can get a very diff a, like similar vibe to from it. It's a stunning palette. So yeah, these berries are, I think, a little bit brighter, a little less grungy than the ones in the ABH, which is why I like it for the summertime. And my final more neutrally pick, can you guess? Natasha Denona Gold. I know this is expensive. Uh, definitely wait for a deal uh, if you are interested in this. And mine is no longer the original palette because I took the gold shade in the middle, like what's in the name, the palette is called gold and the shade I decide to take out is the yellow tone gold that originally lives in the middle of the palette. This is actually Dragon Bite, which is from the Lila palette and I feel it goes really well with this and I'm just not a fan of yellow tone golds. I like coppers, bronzes, 
Like those kind of warm tones I like. Things that are a little bit more red toned leaning or all the way yellow, I like. But I don't really love yellow tone golds on me. There, there's just something about it. It doesn't really go with my complexion. I've seen it look really stunning on people with deeper skin tones. Uh, also people with olive skin tones, it can work really, really well. But on me, it just doesn't really work. However, are we sensing a theme? It's got a couple of like tealy, bluey kind of shades in here. Um, these two like toppery duochrome shades really take this palette to another level. But I've said it before, my favorite shade in the palette is actually this one. This is called Kava uh, and it's a great topper. And it makes every, even the boring browns you get in here, it just really elevates it and take it, takes it to another level. So I feel that this is a great one for the summertime. And this is just a lovely, lovely palette. I really enjoy my Natasha Denona Gold. It is one of my all-time favorite palettes, that for sure. I would say if you wanna, if you're looking into Natasha Denona, you're, you want one of her more expensive palettes, this is the one I would recommend. I didn't, I only own the Lila from like the uh, more expensive ones. Of the other ones, I've just never been interested in the color story. Yet this one really makes my heartbeat a little bit faster. So I think that the summer season is definitely a season where a lot of people like to wear a little bit more color on their eyes. I mean, I'm wearing a blue, like a green look today with like pink lipstick. Like this is like, sort of like my vibe as well. Um, so I, I think that I also wanted to throw in a couple of palettes that I think are just perfect if you want to do that. To stick to the warm tones, but to not have it be too neutral, but sort of, you know, verging on that, like, that gap between the two, I would recommend the Nabla Cutie Coral for sure. This is a stunning warm toned palette that has some stunning pops of coral with red, really stunning duochrome kind of shades, and then you get a bronze and a brown to round out the palette. But especially if you just look at these four, like this is a quad, it's amazing. So that's why the Nabla Cutie palette in the coral shade it's definitely one of my favorite picks for summer. And again, it's nice, it's curated, it's only six shades. Does that mean it's the most versatile palette you will ever find in your lifetime? Perhaps not. Um, but I do feel that these six shades can surprisingly go a long way depending on how you uh, play, you know, put them together. Um, you, can, you don't have to use that bright coral if you don't want to. You can just go for the brown and the bronze. You've got a very neutrally kind of look as well. So. Um, this is definitely a little bit more versatile than you might expect at first glance and it ended up being one of my favorite cutie palettes when I tried a couple last year even though I had not expected to like it at all because it is so warm toned and the color story is so out of my comfort zone but it just showed me again that sometimes going out of your comfort zone is worth it. A palette I have to share with you is ABH's Riviera. I already mentioned the brand a little while ago but the Mono Renaissance is more of a fall palette for me. This bright with neutral palette is one of my favorite for this season. I also like it in the spring season for sure, but right now is definitely when these, especially this like really bright pop of pink that it has in the middle, uh, where it really, really lives for me. A lot of people have been or decluttering this from their collections, but I could personally never get rid of this because these two shimmers, like these bluey periwinkle kind of shades are really, really stunning. I could do without the yellow tone gold, I'm not gonna lie, but I feel that these neutrals at the bottom are perfect for my complexion and setting up a crease shade. I can put some of the brights on the lower lash line. You've got a beautiful turquoise in here. I really like Yacht, like if you just wanna go for something really neutral, you have that option as well. Um, and you've got a brown to deepen things up. So this is actually, again, a, a really versatile palette that if you just have this one for the summertime, you can do so much with it. And I think this palette also, again, did a, didn't get as much credit as people should have given it because this was like the start of ABH starting to release so many palettes because they released the Alyssa Edwards uh, palette right after this one. And it looked very similar, which is why I never bought that one. Um, so yeah, ABH Riviera was sort of like the start of the ending for many people when it came to ABH, I guess. So for a lot of people, I think this palette just isn't perfect for those reasons as well. Um, but this is definitely a color story that I really like. Some more color pop because I think if you are going to wear yellows 
for me it would be now, like in the summer season. I think that there is no more perfect of a season to wear yellows and oranges and those kind of warm tones than it is now. And then I prefer a yellow tone over an orange any time of day. Uh, so the Aha Honey by Colourpop is definitely one I would recommend. Now my Aha Honey looks very different from what this looks like when you buy it because I had a shade from the Mandalorian, the child palette, that I put in place of the pressed glitter. And this, that is actually popping out, uh, this is a shade from the Jaclyn Hill Morphe Vault Armed and Gorgeous palette, and it's the shade Classified, because I felt that the Aha Honey didn't have enough depth, so I brought in two deeper shades to hopefully make this palette work just a little bit better for me. I haven't played around with it since I've reorganized it. Um, but yeah, when you buy this, it comes with a pressed glitter and another matte yellowy shade that I feel is too similar to the one you already get here in the corner. So I kept the shades that I preferred and I just made sure that I could make it work a little bit better. But yeah, if you're looking for a good yellow tone palette, the Aha uh -huh Honey, like this like sunflower yellow shade, and then combined with this shimmer. This is such a stunning, very yellow, but still very bright shade. It's really stunning. Mine is a bit messy though, because some of the shades have puffed up. Um, and it, it's been doing that ever since I bought it. So color pop and quality aren't necessarily like consistent throughout all of their palettes. I do apologize if we're getting a little dark here. I think we're, we're supposed to get rain this afternoon, so I'm not sure what's happening, but I feel like I'm looking really dark, but there's nothing really much I can do about that, unfortunately, as I'm filming using natural lighting. And my camera is currently like set on like the settings I need to film this video. Uh, so I do apologize if we got a little dark throughout the video, uh, but I still have two palettes to share with you. The OPV Tropical Dreams palette is a really lovely one. If you're looking for a blue-green palette with pops of neutral, it's got some oranges, it's got some greens, it's got some teals, it's got some blues. This is very similar to the Tribe palette from Juvia's, but then you get a bunch more shades because this has 18 shades and the Juvia's Place only had nine and that's been discontinued. Um, but here we get some really nice brighter pops of color, which is lovely. You get some really nice like bright blues as well uh, to really make sure it's super summery. Again, very reflective, so I'm not sure if I'm showing you this right, but you get some really interesting gold shades and like different variations of that. So you can very easily do a neutral look with this, but then you get all of these greens, teals, and blues that can really amp it up and take it to the next level. And if you were to then do something like this, but this is Menagerie's Whale Song palette, by the way, um, then uh, this is a great palette and I think you can still buy it. And it's a UK indie brand. So if you're in Europe, this may be easier to get than something like Juvia's Place as well. And then finally, another UK indie brand that I keep recommending, and so many people have stopped talking about this brand, but September Rose Cosmetics Slush Palette? Like, I'll show you the color story, you guys. Doesn't this just scream summer to you? It does to me. Like, this has all the bright shades that I could possibly want. You get a couple of really good shimmers that really pull the palette together. Like, my main gripe with, like, bright rainbow palettes is that they're always mattes and they're never shimmers in those palettes. I love a good shimmer, so I want some shimmer in there. You get everything you need. You have a full spectrum going from like pinky reds into oranges. You get one yellow, some greens, some blues, and then different renditions of purple. And it goes from light to dark with a couple of like very bright neon kind of pops as well. This is the palette that I used to create the look that you see in the icon that is on my channel. This is the palette I used. I love the blendability. It is a more buildable formula, so that's something you need to bear in mind. But this is a lovely, lovely palette, and I just really think that if you want a summer palette, then this is almost like the penultimate kind of summer palette for me. This is bright, it's fun, it's colorful, and it works really well on a fair complexion. Uh, because they aren't overly saturated. So that's why I do really like this palette. That's it. Those are my 10 picks when it comes to best palettes for the summer. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what yours are. And I'm pretty sure that work that I picked a couple palettes here that maybe some of you hadn't expected. I'm also very curious to hear your thoughts on that. 
And then I will be back very soon on Saturday already, so don't forget I will have extra videos up on Saturday to uh, chat some more about eyeshadow palettes with you guys. So stay tuned and I hope to see you in my next video. I'm currently filming four videos a week, so please thumbs up this video if you liked it. That would help me out greatly. And if you would like to stick around for more, then I would hope to have you join my little family here and subscribe to my channel. And I hope to see you in my next video. Have a great day, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.